Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya, weird news, hot gossip, and scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, Hey, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch, you freaks. My God, it is week 80 here at camp, you freaks. I know, I'm I'm feeling freaky. I think we both are an alliance of being freaks today. Yeah, we have no other choice. American Horror Story freak show, um, camp counselor collab. Oh my God, we, okay. Hold on, really quick before no, we jump into things. Start, please, loud and proud. So I wanted to watch American Horror Story Delicate, the one with um, Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, and um, Emma Stone, friend Emma the, Roberts. Friend of the pod. Yes, of course. And I started watching the first two episodes, and Zach's like, whoa, 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 what's going on here, bud? I wanted to watch that. <laughs> I put on my 1940s Brooklyn like baseball player voice. Is that what I did? Yeah, basically, you snatched my iPhone with two year Apple Care warranty oh, out of my hush, hand. Hush. I didn't snatch it. So anything. you did politely ask me. You were like, "Hey, I want to watch that too. Like, can we watch it together?" And I love when we watch telly together. So of <laughs> course, I put it on pause. So I said, "You know what I'm going to do? We had a flight somewhere. This was recently, like maybe a week ago." I said, but I'm in the mood to watch American Horror Story. So I started watching 1985, which I haven't seen before. Um, So now I have two seasons that I'm midway through and you just, you don't want to continue watching Delicate. So what's the scoop? Are we going to watch it? No, I think in the moment you were really excited about it and I wanted, I felt a sense of, I don't know, FOMO, I guess. And I actually don't want to watch it. Oh, okay. So I could have been watching. I told you before we got on the flight back that you could watch it. And you're like, no, no, no. You'll want to watch when we get home. You're going to regret this. That's and get it. Here's how it. <laughs> it's been a week later and I don't work. I don't, I don't care. I don't care about Ryan Murphy and his spooky little, <laughs> little B scenes and bullshit. I don't care about it. You told me that you wanted to watch it. And you were like, I'll watch the, the two episodes. If you watch 1984, I'm going to watch the two episodes and then I'll be caught up and we can watch it together. Oh, so you wanted to start a show with a fight. And I see that now and this is where it's heading. Okay. Oh, wait, guess what? I'm constantly evolving as a human being, as are the rest of us. I said something, I take it back and I don't have any apologies about it. Watch it after this. Go downstairs, put on the telly and enjoy your show because one thing on me, I love private viewing and you need a group project and that's very evident in this conversation. You do what you want to do. I don't want to watch Emma Roberts be pregnant and whining like a rich person with Kim Kardashian on TV. I want to watch season two of Real Housewives of New Jersey, okay? I'm very into that right now. We do it, do it. Do it, please. Oh my okay. God. It's not even a good impression of Teresa, but Jonathan tells me it's a good impression. It's not even good. It's so good. And we didn't know that he could do it. It just came out one day and I was gagged. No, I... you're saying the bar way too high. Okay, it's I'm not sorry. That Put good. the bar on the ground, guys. <laughs> okay. Louis. <laughs> ah. Okay, enough of this. this you're is so even... good at it. No. We found it. We found your. <laughs> Okay, you found your impression. I have other impressions, I feel. No, you absolutely do, but we had no idea that you could do this so well. Okay, well, can we start the show now? Okay, yeah. Guys, please, figure it out. Major news (laughs) at Camp Shady Birch. Quite possibly the most devastating accident in recent history. We in the counselor cabin had a massive flood over the weekend in the bathroom. I'm not even joking, you guys. If you live in the New York state or maybe honestly New England, this past weekend that just passed us, Saturday was, it was really bad rain. I think we got two inches in 24 hours. I think that's a lot. The rain kept tumbling down in the city that we we lost. Wait, truly, that is exactly what happened. It really did. It just wouldn't stop raining. I got Tony Petraka on the phone. I said, what's happening? Who's that? That was my local weatherman. Oh, okay. Oh, the guy who came down on the helicopter. The guy who came down in elementary school in the helicopter picture this guys 300 elementary students at westport massachusetts freaking out but every time i tell this story i think i made it up <laughs> like is there any yeah. photographic evidence no. or someone to back up the story let me explain why okay. i think i'm lying about this is because when i was a kid they would advertise that he would do that oh so you don't know if you just like so, really i think i wanted it so bad <laughs> That I've created a fake memory. Can someone that went to Westport Elementary School between the years of 2001, I was 
in elementary school when the Twin Towers went down and we got released from school. Slay. Okay. Between the years of 2001 to 2004, did Tony Petraka land his um, helicopter? I was going to say escalator. His esca- <laughs> did he land his escalator yeah. in the track field? Regardless, Tony Petraka knows how much rain happened and he's still the local weather man. He won't give up. He won't. And I, I guess he's good at what he does. No, seriously. So I come down, guys, Saturday morning after it's been raining all night and I go, I put a, co- I put a pot of coffee on, all right? And then I, I, I feed Buffy and I go into the bathroom because I had a shit immediately. Immediately, it was just like flowing out of me and the entire bathroom was soaking wet you were in bed still i don't think you ever saw like how much damage and destruction happened yeah but i've seen the damage and destruction now so what is happening here you guys is that the side of our cabin aka our apartment has a crack in the foundation and we've had some like uh some water bubbling on the paint in the bathroom before but very small kind of localized i would even say sure and this was truly the straw that broke the camel's back. The water, it was so windy and so wet that it it really, the top of the window frame bubbled up like you see in those videos. If you ever yeah, like videos. under the paint and then they poke it and all the water comes out. And it, we didn't even have to poke it because it had popped like yeah. a big pimple in the middle of the night. Water all over the toilet, all over the floor, all over the little trash can. It was soaking wet in there. I couldn't even believe it. If the water damage before was localized, this was nationalized. This was, it was everywhere. I was scared because we have a little wall heater in there because it's freezing because whoever put the addition onto our house didn't insulate it properly. Mm. So I was scared to turn that on. I turned it on today because it was freezing down there. But when it was wet, I'm like, I don't want to get electrocuted. Not no, again. I totally get it. Yeah. I had to call FEMA. Who? FEMA. Who's that? That's the, the people who come in nationally when there's like a national disaster. Oh. That, see, that joke would have landed if you understood FEMA. No, and no, now no, I people, just look like an asshole. No, no. See, them out there, they get it. Everybody who's listening is laughing. I only know OSHA. I just saw two campers behind the camera get up and leave. <laughs> <laughs> they put their whistles back in the bin. <laughs> they said, I'm, I'm done. Okay. So I cleaned it up like Cinderella all morning, but I had a, I had a goal in mind because the night before... I bought these Trader Joe's croissants that I keep seeing on TikTok. So these are really cool. This is a positive in a story of darkness. Yeah, we need to put that on, but we need to shelf that for a second and just take a breather because yeah. it's getting dark. Because as I'm cleaning up like Cinderella in my rags, my tattered rags, I knew that in the oven I had just put in these croissants. But these are, croissants are really cool, you guys. So if you go to Trader Joe's, they have these frozen almond croissants. And they when you pull them out of the freezer the night before, they're like hockey pucks. But you let them rise overnight the next morning, they were huge, like these big soft pillows. I couldn't believe it. I knew it was going to happen because I saw it on TikTok, but it was amazing to actually see it in my own home. And I'll rise up, rise like a flame, I'll rise up. Yeah, they do get really big. The proof was in the pudding that day. I Rise unafraid. Come on, that was the best part. So I thought that I had had almond croissants before. It's giving Tony Petraka. Oh, yeah. It's a memory <laughs> that I created in my very own mind. But I don't think I've ever had one because when I bit into it, I said, now what is this in here? It almost tastes like, and somebody out there has to agree with me because you don't and I feel crazy. But the inside of like an almond or sometimes almond like liqueur yeah, no, t- I to me tastes like maraschino cherry. That is such an interesting thing that I could not disagree with more. And that's- but I love your gumption. Thank you. Wait, what did I say last time? Because people were saying in the comments and loved it. I made up a word. And I, I need to trademark it. Oh, you have to go back and look at it and then really yeah. reestablish it into the camp glossary. Because mm-hmm. if you say it once, it could be a passing moment. You're so right. We definitely need a camp glossary. So you believe that an almond croissant tastes like a maraschino cherry is what I just heard? Yes. And okay. I, I feel like they don't taste any different. There is some fancy paste in an almond croissant. It's sweet. It's got some sort of oomph to it. It's not nutmeg. This, there's definitely some cinnamon in there. You can't you can't deny that. I didn't think there was cinnamon in there at all. Okay, so this were is we a real eating wonder. The same, yeah, what's going on here? But we both agreed they were amazing. True. So campers, that is a positive in the story. If you see those in the frozen section, you have to put them out nine hours before you make them, but the night before, and then you wake up, put them in the oven for 20 minutes. It's a fresh, buttery, crispy, flaky croissant. Oh my God, and they were huge. Also, apparently, what? the taste of arsenic is... The same as an almond. So just keep keep an eye out. See, see if I, if someone asked me, and I didn't know that already because you just told me right now, I would have thought arsenic would have tasted like salsa or like <laughs> spicy. Like on almonds? 
Yeah, because to your liver and your organs, it's like, that's spicy. Yeah, like, so I'm like, why does it taste like an almond? I don't know. It's just kind of like a little a little mystery of the universe. I don't remember. I think Georgia Hard Stark taught me that. Do you think Blue Diamond knows that? The almond brand? Yeah. Well, you better tell them. Okay, Blue Diamond, if you're listening. Wait, <laughs> sorry, what? another, a fever dream. Blue Diamond had your face carved into an almond once. The yeah, brand I, Blue Diamond. We don't talk about that enough. Well, we didn't have the podcast at the time, but yeah, I I am a huge almond lover. I literally have a YouTube video that's ten minutes of me ranking like fifteen flavors of Blue Diamond almonds. I think they're they're an incredible brand. They're the they're the the, the apple of almonds, <laughs> truly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the brand Apple. I was like, what is happening today? I'm so, I don't know. It's a Sunday. <laughs> it's supposed to be a fun day. I'm out to lunch. Yeah. We're, yeah. Honestly, we should have lunch while we do the podcast. I'd have a salad right now. Some greens. I need some roughage. Truly. My stomach is not okay right now. I do listen to one podcast and they eat when they do it and I hate it. Oh, uh, but what, you but you still listen? No, but if it's a video, I'll watch it on YouTube Got because it. I can eat along. But if it's audio only and I'm tuning in, I just, I don't want to hear the munch and the crunch in. No, that's a safe thing to say out loud. Yeah. Okay. Let's transfer back to the issues we're having. So I clean up the I clean up the wet. Right. We clean up the wet. We clean up the water. And the beauty of not owning this cabin and renting it from a landlord is that this isn't our problem. Okay. The problem stops after I send the text message. I say, Hey, hey, Mrs. Landlord, your entire bathroom is flooded. I've cleaned it to the best of my abilities. Someone has to come look at this, right? I didn't say someone has to come look at this, but that's what that's what she said next. But to understand our landlord is to know that she has no respect of our time ever. And I'm going to publicly say that because on multiple occasions when we've needed her to come to the house, she will tell us one time and then show up four hours later and then ruin our entire day. So I wasn't playing this game. I know her tricks. I think she's a really nice person. I just think she has no respect for people's time. So I, she was like, oh, I'm actually in the area because she doesn't live around here. She moved kind of further out of the city. Mm. So she's like, I'm actually in the area because I think she's opening up another apartment building. So she's like, I can swing by after. And I was like, okay, we have a hard out at 1215. I'm not doing this because she'll tell me she'll be there soon. And by soon means five hours. And I've literally waited an entire Saturday one day for her to show up, for her to come in for 10 minutes. And that was it. And we had no, we couldn't do anything all day because we were waiting for her to show up. And also we knew that the the situation that we're in right now, she can't do anything immediate. It's going to be like to come in, check it out and be like, okay, I know what's wrong with it and then leave. But she also already knew what was wrong with the outside like months yeah. ago. And you can't fix a leaky window when it's still downpouring, right? Yeah. And once the big hole happened, like, like the the paint came down, like the rain came tumbling down. We now know what's happening. So she, okay, that was a great sentence. Um, so <laughs> I, she looks at the picture. She's like, "It's the downspout." I'm like, "It's absolutely not the downspout, Chica. It is truly the the crack in the foundation." What's the downspout? Is that the where well, the, the gutter? rain meets the gutter and then comes down? And that happened initially. It's not what it is. There's a crack in the foundation because how is the rain at the top of the window inside the building popping a hole in our bathroom? That's not rain collecting at the base of the window that's above the window and it's from that giant crack in the foundation that sounded like a cute as what we aim for song where rain meets gutter i don't know what that band is oh never mind well Scrap there's that. someone out there two campers just got up and left again <laughs> oh my god you guys please <laughs> close the door close the door so um she texts back immediately and she's like yeah like um i'll be there by 12 15 an hour later she's like i'm actually not gonna make it and i was like wow surprise um so she's gonna come by tuesday you're gonna be here for that and i do like her i, just, I yeah i like her as a person we have gotten notices that our gas is getting shut off frequently oh my god yeah i, I like we, we pay you and you don't pay i them. think that's the, that's what i'm saying about being like a renter it's we, there's such a, like an immense like pressure or conversation always happening about how millennials and gen z are never gonna be able to afford a home home because of like mortgage rates and just because of the state of the economy like our our grandparents bought homes for three blue 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 diamond almonds back in the day <laughs> they sneezed and clapped mm -hmm. twice and the landowner said just take the land that was amazing performance <laughs> and now they're asking for truly not even your firstborn they don't want that they want they want you yeah they want, they you. want your soul so um but there is perks of not owning a home it's in cases like this where when things break I send a text and the conversation ends there. My friends purchased a home within the first two weeks of being brand new homeowners, water heater breaks. Any homeowners out there who knows how much a water heater is, it's a lot. They're expensive. Yeah, 
And it's not even like a lot where it's like, oh my God, that was an expensive takeout order. It's like, oh my God, this was $15,000? Yeah, for what? For what? I'll uh, have a cold shower. Yeah, you say that and then you get it and you're like, fuck this. No, but it, it's just, it's so interesting because I post that on my story about how like that, that sentiment about being like, okay, like this is such a perk of renting is that when things break, it's not my problem. And so many people that were renters agreed with me and then so many people who were homeowners were DMing me and like, I bought a house five years ago and it was the worst decision of my life. I've spent more money in fixing things than I'll probably ever get back on the house, which is like obviously totally sad. But I just think that growing up, I think we all always aspire to be homeowners. Yeah. I think a lot of us still do. I know at one point I will want to be a homeowner because I, I would like to paint a wall. Yeah. I would like to change a fixture. Of and course. I think that's something that's a, a good perk about it. And obviously, but I'm sick of the word equity. Okay. Like, fuck off. Who cares if I have equity in the home? I just like, Yeah. Like care. you have to invest, invest in the house and Who invest told us now. That? It's like, shut up. Like I'm, I have no roots. I'm trying to float around this town. I don't want to be glued down to this place. If I want to shake my tits in Morocco, I'm going to shake my tits in Morocco. Go, you know yeah we truly are two air plants aren't we <laughs> we literally have no roots rootless it is the seller's market and i'm sick of hearing people say that i'm like i know what it means but shut the fuck up also homeowners insurance let's not yeah and can you imagine if jonathan and i owned a home and we had to fix something could you imagine the two of us fixing a faucet together? Okay, but when we do, because it's going to happen, it's inevitable, we're going to be foaming it, obviously. We're going to be the homo homeowners. Oh, my God. It's, it's going to be a series. It's going to be disgusting. Oh, we're vlogging home improvements now. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the channel. We're the homo homeowners. I'm excited for interior design. Yeah, of course. There's so many things in this in this place that I want to change, but, you know, there's, there's worse things happening. I've never lived in an apartment where I painted anything. I've always just lived in whatever base color it is like this room i'm like it's fine i don't hate it i don't love it but. yeah i never would have chose it what would you call this color it was annoying because when i saw this apartment it was a neutral kind of like tan and then right before i moved in she's like oh, i'm gonna paint the walls for you and she chose gray which i don't hate gray walls but i hate gray walls in an older apartment because the finishings and the moldings in here are pre-war they're like 1920s and i'm like Oh, it, it's looking a little industrial. It, it's not, they don't match the vibe. Like, yeah. you have a brand new apartment or a house and everything's stainless steel and, like, nice. Obviously, Greg can look chic, but not against the stained glass right that I'm looking at. Like, this isn't matching, girl. Speaking of landlord and not matching, when she said she was going to do touch-ups around the house, oh, like, just with God. paint, just, you know, nicks and bits and bobs that Granny. I was, like, fine with, whatever, nooks and crannies, she had somebody come in and touch things up that was the wrong color paint that doesn't match our wall, and it's also the wrong finish. We have an eggshell. We got a glossy. Yeah, so it's a high gloss and like two shades lighter. And it looks yeah, like... Yeah, I can see it right there on the wall. And in the background of some of our videos, especially yours, because we do yours by the stairs, yeah. there's that big square. And I'm like, we can't do anything about it. Yeah, but I'm not an aesthetic person, so I don't mind that. If I own the house, I would make it perfect. But since we don't own this, I don't care. Yeah, but I've gotten comments before where they're like, not the guy who criticizes other people's houses. I'm like, well, yeah, I would say that on someone else's too. Yeah, well, you kind of set yourself up for that one with your brand. But I don't own the home. I'm not a homo homeowner. Oh, I agree. Yet. I'm just, I can see where they're coming from, but I, I'm on your side. Yeah. It was funny the other week we tried to install a Jolie shower head. Have you guys heard of those? Jolie. Jolie. Jolie shower head. Um, they're always on TikTok and it's basically like a filtered water shower head. And I've had a lot of dry scalp issues this winter. Mm. I've never experienced this before. So it's getting better now. I think I'm just stepping outside more and it's helping my skin but the shower head installation process should be quite easy one would think we couldn't figure it out no i think we could figure it out well maybe not we we didn't figure it out we tried you had you were in a step stool in the shower and the shower head almost came off the wall we were pouring hot water and cold water <laughs> on different components to maybe release pressure because we saw someone do that on reddit the two of us couldn't change a shower head so I'm a little scared for our home ownership journey. Yeah, but it'll be fun. Well, the reason why we had the heart out at 1215 was because we were actually looking at another cabin in the city. <gasps> Can you imagine? I know. I think I'm ready for a move. I am too. We've been here for two years. And like I've said a lot of times on this podcast, I don't ever envision myself being a lifelong New Yorker. 
I enjoy it. When people like New Yorkers get really pretentious and like, like oh, you're not a real New Yorker. I, don't ever call me one, baby, because I don't ever want to be one. I'm here for a reason. I'm here to work. I'm here to network. I'm here to have fun. And then I'm dipping, okay? I pay my taxes. I contribute to this environment. But I don't want to like raise a family here. And by raise a family, it means get a dog one day. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't want to, I don't want to put down roots here. So my my reason for saying that is that I I am ready to leave our neighborhood and move somewhere else in Brooklyn because while we're here I want to enjoy and experience as much of it as I can and I feel like we've kind of like run this neighborhood in a way where I'm like okay I'm ready to have some different walking paths when we were moving here too we didn't really have yeah. a good grip on on everything that's going on and which neighborhoods have what and now that we've had like two years to explore everything we know what we like what we don't like and yeah it's just it'll be nice to have a nice little new setting yeah this for sure like right now we have some good natural lighting we also have like studio cameras up if you're watching on youtube but apartment here is a very dark and i need some like natural light so we looked at this apartment yesterday in williamsburg um which is very different from where we live now it's just much more like dense in population um and it was it was good but it was so funny we're not gonna go we're not gonna like live there it's just not the right space for us but when we got there it was in an apartment building so we had to wait for the uh per the doorman to bring us up and look at the unit so the people weren't there but they were still living here and it's a very <laughs> interesting process so especially if anyone who's ever like toured an apartment or toured a home or anything where there's people living there it's so Weird. It's invasive. I told a story before on this podcast when I had the prop dildo on the table yes. and a whole family came in to tour my apartment. I was like, I swear I'm not using it yet. Yeah. <laughs> so we go to tour the apartment and people are living there. We walk in. It's nice, but I'm immediately hit with this odor and it just smells dirty. Like, How would you describe the odor of the, peop the, the people that were living there? Like a dirty hat after a baseball game. Ooh, very true. And it was a couple. We could tell by the the cabinets and closet space. Yeah, it wasn't like sweat or body odor, but it was just like dirty sheets uh -huh. in a stale room that the windows are sealed shut so you can't get circulation. Yeah, like at baseline, like the, it wasn't physically dirty, but like I'm going to be honest right now. We need to wash the linens. We need to wash the hanging towel behind the door that's been there for two weeks. And we need to open some windows. And we're going to refresh. We're going to light a candle and we're going to be okay. I can tell you're not a dirty person, but you're having a moment where you're like, hey, I've I've, I've skipped that Sunday reset a couple times. Mm. And now we really need to go in with a deep reset because it was stagnant and it was stinky. But we go in there and the guy, the doorman's like, oh, open whatever. Which is like obviously like warranted in a way because I feel like... You need. I need to look in your closet. I don't need to like thumb through your your knits, but I do need to see the depth of the space to see like if I can handle this kind of storage. Oh, but the, the knits were thumbed through, baby. Let's be honest. We were once we got that green light, we were snooping. You're I was like so stupid. Well, I was I, not snooping. I had to see if there was storage space in the bathroom. There was a medicine cabinet. I took a peek. I was going through the cabinets in the uh, in the kitchen. Would you find? Well, just to see, like, okay, because it's some things are really misleading. Is this a deep cabinet or not? Mm -hmm. And I was looking at their their choices of like oats, and I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Seems like you have a couple containers here, but we're not really using them. Yeah, and there was like fudge on the um the island. I was like, oh, is this for the tour? <laughs> like, is this? Can I have a piece? That was in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not the fudge in the bathroom. They did have a two liter bottle of Mountain Dew in the refrigerator, and that's all I need to know about them. Mm -hmm. I did like their couch. I did take a picture of the couch, and I took a measurement of it because I said this is a good couch length. Yeah, it's so interesting to see how people set up their lives. Because I'm I'm there for a reason. I'm there to like picture myself in it, but I keep getting swung in the other direction and being like, wow. So that's what you did with the place. Yeah, they had they were using. <laughs> bowling pins as decorations i was, didn't see that where was that they were um on the shelves behind the um the the couch well maybe they were bowlers maybe maybe they were nude bowlers my brother had a birthday party at a bowling alley when he was younger and guess what they do i think you already know do they, do they sing to you it's so cool i'm gonna cry because it's so exciting i'm literally well i got i think it's so magical you get a bowling pin they give you an actual real bowling pin and everyone at the party signs it with a sharpie Oh, they bring it home. That's cute. My brother Caleb had that in his room, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. You're literally crying. Because it's so... Who thought of that? That was such a great idea. And and if you did think of that, just know that all these years later, I'm crying over my brother's birthday gift. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cool? Bowling is always like a Brunswick bowling. 
Like, is that a brand? Is that a chain? Did you have a Brunswick? No, see, it, Philadelphia is Well, this full, is Illinois, too. And so, well, maybe Illinois. I feel like we're, the two places you grew up are full of chains. Chain. Mm. We don't, I feel like everything in Mass is like a mom and pop. It's like, you want to go to Wonder Bowl? That's true. But Holiday the li- Lanes? The liquor stores. I've never seen so many crazy named random liquor stores There's just, everything is life. like a small little, little, yeah, little moment. I like that. Me, too. How did we get to bowling pins? Oh, we were snooping the bowling pins on the wall. Got it. Yeah, I didn't find anything else that interesting. I found out that I don't like the apartment, and, yeah. and I'm going to keep it moving. Mm-hmm. We have some pl- more time here in the lease, so hopefully our landlord is not listening to today's episode. Do you think she's a camper? No way. No, but she does know that we do content. I told her that when I moved in, and she said that she saw one of my videos on her Instagram, and she was like, I recognize that kitchen. Wait, is that, that my-, my kitchen? That has to be so weird. Well, I was in a wig, so I don't think it hit right away for her. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. She's busy. Mm. One thing about our landlord, she's got the entrepreneurial s- spirit. She's running businesses. She's running buildings. She's running my patients. <laughs> <laughs> but she's standing on business. This episode of Camp Counselors is sponsored by BetterHelp. I am a huge, huge fan of therapy. A couple of years ago, I was in a really dark space. I was feeling super overwhelmed and I started going to therapy and it really changed my entire life. And it's not about finding solutions. It's about finding ways to cope with the stresses of everyday life. Through therapy, I definitely learned how to set boundaries and find positive ways of coping. And this isn't just for people who have experienced major trauma. I feel like Everybody can benefit from therapy. Think about it, campers. How many hours a day do you spend staring at your phone, trying to pass the time on a For You page or your Instagram? Maybe take an hour for yourself and prioritize your mental health and talk to somebody about what's going on in your life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash camp to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash camp. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash camp. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Seriously, I am so obsessed with Factor. We've already talked about it before, how Jonathan and I were using this service before we even got this sponsorship. Literally had it for lunch today. And because they're fresh, never frozen, you never get that weird frost-bitten green bean. No, every vegetable, every protein, they know how to season. Let's just call it what it is. These people know how to use a spice, which is so not common in this field. That's why I'm so obsessed with Factor. The shredded chicken taco bowl always has the label of top rated and I get it because I get it every single week because I know I love it so much. Rice, chicken, vegetables, the crema, the crema. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, no cooking, or cleanup needed, which is amazing when you're busy and on the go. So what are you waiting for? Head to factormeals.com slash camp50 and use code camp50 to get 50% off. That's code camp50 at factormeals.com slash camp50 to get 50% off. That's a lot of 50s. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back to Morning Announcements, campers. This is the part of the show where we share news articles with you that you might have missed that we want you to spread like wildfire. Jonathan, will you take us away today? Yes, of course. I would love to. Buckle up, because I'm taking you away. I feel like if you guys listened to the last trail mix, I don't know how many people didn't listen to the end because we did give a a bit of a trigger warning who needed to click off, but this is a good redemption story for the geese. Mm. So let's get into it. I will read the, um, the article at the end. Blossom is the resident goose at Riverside Cemetery in Iowa. So Blossom and her partner, Bud, what a cute name, Blossom and Bud. Blossom and Bud is so cute. It's giving 1950s cartoon. So in this whole cemetery, they were kind of the only two geese that were there. There were other like ducks and such, but they were the only two geese and they had a big um, like pond that was in the middle of this and they would roam around the cemetery living their little lives. But then sadly, Bud passed away. So, okay, I promise you guys it gets brighter. It gets brighter, I swear. Blossom becomes depressed. 
And she spends entire days staring at her reflections and like polished headstones. That is so sad. Is she thinking it's Bud? Yeah, she just, she has no other geese to look at. So she looks at her own reflection. She looks at her reflection in like the window of the office. Stop crying. Don't. Wait till you see the videos of it. She I just stands there. I don't want to there. see the video of her crying. So then the um, the employees that were working there like felt so bad they didn't know what to do. So they thought they were helping her by putting a mirror outside. But kind of made it worse because when she was looking at herself in the headstones, she would look at herself and walk around and just like look at herself in all the different headstones. When they put the mirror outside, she just kind of stood there and just didn't move ever. <laughs> She's crystal clear. Is that my bud? Is that my bud? Nope. It's not Blossom. This is you. So then they posted to their Facebook. Okay. Wait, the cemetery has a Facebook group? The cemetery? Who doesn't have a Facebook group these days? (laughs) You guys, are you following our Facebook group? You little (laughs) rascals out there. You better be. Okay, so here's the personal ad that was posted. Lonely, widowed, domestic goose seeks life partner for companionship and occasional shenanigans. Come (laughs) share life with me at Riverside Cemetery where you'll enjoy swimming in the lovely lake, good food, numerous friends. Take a peek into the door where there's strange but uh, kind humans who feed us lots of goodies. I'm youthful, adventurous, and lively. I've been told I'm beautiful. The ad was a success. A local couple called in and they had a lonely, widowed male goose named Frankie. Oh, he was widowed? Yeah. Oh. So he was going through the same thing. They can bond over that. Mm-hmm. And they offered him up as Blossom's new partner, which it was like hard for them because it was like their domesticated goose. But they were like, hey, this is Frankie's lonely, Blossom's lonely. And let's be honest, the cemetery's got space. Yeah. Especially if they're going to like combine them. That's probably the, unless they live on like a ranch or something. Yeah. Uh, so the two met on Valentine's Day, 2023. <laughs> And they hit it off. And the cemetery shared a bunch of cute pictures of the two and videos. Um, But then the update stopped. People were like, hey, I remember that goose. Where's the goose? Where's the gander? The cemetery was like, oh, no, here's an update. We just haven't been posting a lot. They just celebrated their one year and they're happier than ever. And they're just walking around the cemetery being happy little jolly Frankie and Blossom. They just fired their social media secretary. I think they just weren't posting. I don't know. Maybe not a lot of people were dying so they didn't have a lot of work to do. See guys, this is why you have to be really consistent with your social media content because if you're not, people think you died. Exactly. So be careful. But I thought it was a cute little story. So cute. It's That's that's nice. And I think that's just like humanity at its purest form. Mm-hmm. So this came from a CBS News article by Steve Hartman called Cemetery Staff Take Out Personal Ad for Goose Whose Mate Died and Find Her a um, New Match. I do feel like CBS does a great job of finding really great human interest stories of like the bigger networks. Mm-hmm. I think they really are putting their bussies into... Um, positive uplifting content. So CBS, good job at putting your bussy into that. But also I had originally actually found this from a TikTok user. Uh, oh, never The mind. Good News Girl. And then I, I kind of like traced it back because she showed a thing of the article. But I just want to give her credit because, hey, she posts good news. Good news, girl. We need good news. We do. And I feel like sometimes that's just like what we all need to hear. My story isn't good news. It's not? It's like, I don't know. I think it's just crazy news. Okay, so we got it. Let's get into it. Yeah. Well, it's not negative. It's just like, oh my God, Stop really? Stop teasing us. So Texas man boards Delta flight using a photo of another passenger's ticket by uh, Marlene Le- Lethang and Jay Blackman. Um, it's on NBC News. They love to be stern over there. <laughs> Um, So a Texas man was arrested after he boarded a Delta Airlines flight in Utah using a photo of another passenger's ticket, authorities say. Wycliffe Florizer, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, 26, faces charges of stowaway on an aircraft after he boarded a Delta flight 1683 at Salt Lake City International Airport on March 17th, bound for Austin, Texas. So I looked up what the charge of stowaway means, and it's kind of exactly what you think it is. It's whoever with the like intent having boarded, entered, or... Um, secreted himself aboard a vessel or aircraft at any place within or without the jurisdiction of the United States, remains aboard after the vessel or aircraft has left such place and is thereon at any place within the jurisdiction of the United States. Um, so it's like illegally, I think you could be a stowaway on like probably a train. A train. Yeah, just getting on without a ticket. Yeah, maybe in the back of a car if you're hiding in the back seat. 
In a trunk? Yeah, but not in a car. Well, Unless it's someone else's car, then the driver doesn't know. It is just a vessel of any sort. So who are we to define the definition of vessel? You're absolutely right. I am no judge and I am no jury. I am just a lowly counselor at a camp. What is a tortilla chip but a vessel to get salsa in your mouth? That's what everyone always says at the mess hall. Mm. So this guy has been in Utah for a snowboarding trip, but was trying to get back to his residency in Georgia, Texas. Instead of residence, not residency. He's not doing like a live show. Georgia, Texas? <laughs> yeah. Oh, George, Texas. Oh. Such a funny name. As he had family from Florida visiting. So his family shows up. They're in there. They're, we're here. He's like, oh, I'm almost there. I'll be on the flight. Gets bumped from the flight. So he books a flight on Southwest the day before he does the stowaway charge, gets bumped, then gets rebooked for the next day on on Southwest, gets bumped again. So instead of waiting for the next Southwest, Southwest flight, he went into the Delta area of the airport where he was seen on surveillance footage taking photos of multiple passengers' phones and their boarding passes while they were not looking. Oh, so he didn't get bumped from a Delta one? He didn't have a Delta ticket, period. No, he had a Southwest, and I'll tell you more about that in a second. He then used the picture on his phone to ultimately board flight 1683. So do you know when you go to an airport and you add your phone, your ticket to like your Apple wallet? Yeah. And it kind of just like rests on your screen or whatever. Right. I think he was taking pictures of that like QR code. From other people's phones? Multiple people. They have the security footage. It's literally the airport. And they just didn't know? They just had their phone open and he just took a picture of their phone open? Exactly. So he boarded the flight and entered... When he boarded the flight, he entered the lavatory in the front of the aircraft where he spent a significant amount of time as others were boarding. Mm. So he used that little QR code. He scanned it in. We put your phone down, gets on the flight, hides in the bathroom. Um, after boarding was completed, he made his way back from out of the lavatory to his seat. Um, at, when he exited, a flight attendant noticed that there was no seats available. Like the doors were already shut. So there's like one person standing. I'm sure she's doing her final scan. They go up and down like a hundred times to make sure everything's like chilling and good. Um, and she approached him. But at that point, the aircraft doors had been secured, like I just said. So she checks his ticket. He's seat 21F. But the flight attendant already verified that 21F belonged to another passenger. Flight attendant got his name and was unable to locate a valid ticket or reservation for him on that Delta flight or any Delta flights. The plane ended up returning to the gate. And when they deported, um, he was met by law enforcement. That's going to be so awkward that like everybody on the plane knows that what's going on that you don't have a ticket and everybody's pissed that everything's 100%. pushed off for another two hours and you just have to stand there because you don't even have a seat that's so embarrassing well they interviewed the delta gate agent and who said that the the ticket belonged to like a minor female passenger traveling alone and when she went up to the gate it was having that like it was having um, an issue but they probably like oh it's just some scan they printed her a new ticket and she was good to go but it was because it had already been scanned in by that guy Oh, because it's like it doesn't happen ever. So they're probably like, oh, like the like obviously it happened, but it doesn't happen a lot that that's not their first thoughts. Be like, oh, there's a stowaway in the lavatory. Yeah, you know what I mean. Of course. So he told authorities that he had been given a Southwest buddy ticket, buddy pass ticket for March 16th. No available seats. He got rebooked for March 17th. Like I said, no available seats. Ended up trying to get on this Delta flight. He admitted he had made a mistake and was only trying to get home. The transport, the Transportation Security um, Administration said that he had been screened at the airport on March 17th without incident using a photo ID that matched the name of the boarding pass. Delta said it's cooperating with law enforcement and federal agencies for the investigation. Um, he has an active warrant out for his arrest in Austin, Texas. It's oh unclear God, that what? what the warrant is for, but Austin police flagged him as one having violent tendencies. Oh. So he's also being held at Salt Lake City County on federal detainer. So that's all we know about it so far. But the buddy pass basically means that he has a friend that works for South Southwest and they gave him a free ticket. Right. Right. So immediately the first thought is like, oh, well, if they weren't overbooking flights, which a lot of airlines do, which is I completely like think it's awful. You shouldn't ever overbook a flight, and if you're going to overbook, then you need to like have reasonable accommodations for the people that you're screwing over, which yeah, you don't. Ever. Stop begging people to give up their seats. Like that's I just don't understand how that happens. And I can't really feel bad for someone who's not actually purchasing a ticket. You got bumped from two flights. That sucks, but you didn't even pay for it. So if you got bumped from the second flight, why didn't you just go up to the ticket counter and buy an actual ticket? Why was this your next bet? Like there had to have been another solution here and you just can't get away. I just saw a video of someone get out of a bathroom on an airport, like in an airplane, and they came out, they could smell weed from the bathroom. Smoke was coming out of the doors and they opened the door and it was like a cartoon where he stepped out and there was just a cloud of smoke. And he was like, sorry. There was a girl <laughs> who accidentally, quote unquote, accidentally vaped. I'm like, are people dumb? Like yeah. just, 
handle yourself for the duration of the flight. I'm white knuckling a vape in my lap right now as I record this. And I know what it feels like you want to hit your vape, but I'm not in an airline right now. I'm in a cabin. I can vape in my own cabin. Okay. Not, not in a cabin in the sky. Not and not yeah, not, not in, in that, that cabin. cabin. Um yeah, so he's going to jail. It just it seemed like a really bad idea. But I just think it was crazy that on surveillance footage, I always feel really safe at an airport because there is just so much security and metal detecting and they're they're constantly trying to sniff out crime. So it's really interesting to see that they had so much video footage of him trying to take pictures. Of course they He's do. an airport. idiot. Are you, the, he's a fucking idiot. It's the worst place to ever commit a crime. And he did it. And he got in the bathroom. He's like, I'm just going to hang out here. Hang low for a minute. What did he think was going to happen when he got back to his seat? Did he think it would cancel out the other passengers thing? I think he was betting on there being at least one empty seat. Because if there was one empty seat, no one would have said anything. But it just happened to be a full flight. And Delta flights usually are. Yeah. We always fly Delta. Delta will never be a stowaway. It's very Delta. To sing on. I'm Caitlin Bristow, host of Off the Vine podcast, where I get real, well, maybe a little too real sometimes, with my friends and celeb guests from Bachelor franchise and beyond. I'm talking guests like Jonathan Van Ness, Nikki Glazer, Wells Adams, Elise Myers. Just like <laughs> in this like business jacket, like I would love some tacos. <laughs> Heidi D'Amelio, Big Brothers, Taylor Hale. I have to bring it up because it happened and we're going to get through it. What I do. And so many more. So come hang out with us, hear ridiculous confessions and get a little vulnerable because you know what? We're all just floating on this weird little planet together. Follow, rate and review Off the Vine podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. juice and bear spray campers it's time to pack it up and take a hike welcome back to take a hike this is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike what am i telling to take a hike this week you may be asking yourself i three campers are raising their hands saying what is it john what is it guys calm down he's gonna say it so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like wait what is wait, it wait what is let it? me review my clipboard cursive printed in long form Oh, you had a passionate rant on the couch about this this week. Let's hear about it. And I, I wasn't even thinking about doing it for the podcast. And you were like, write that down. Do it for the podcast. So there we are. I'm sitting on my tight little bussy on the couch. Oh, wow. What? I was. <laughs> and we're watching Real Housewives of New Jersey. It was like, why are you mouthing the words that I'm saying? That was so freaky. Why do you always make fun of me? I'm not making fun of you. That was just creepy. I didn't realize I was doing it. Now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm red faced on the camera. You feel good? Yeah. Okay. Are keep you going. So we're watching uh, like a couple seasons ago. Um, and Teresa's man. Say it. Oh my God, Louis! Louis took me on a boat for my birthday, and it was so crazy because he loves me so much, and I love Louis. <laughs> so Louis <laughs> took Teresa out on a on a boat, and he had like this long message, and it was printed on a scroll, and it had cursive printed on this long ass scroll, and I'm like, I absolutely hate the way that looks. Now let me be clear: if it's handwritten, I think we need to keep that alive. You know, keep that going, keep the culture alive, keep cursive in school it is so important that people know how to do cursive but you're saying you don't like it when it's printed on out. like yeah on from a computer onto like a menu at you, a restaurant you hate digital cursive yeah thank you that's literally what i was looking for digital cursive i'm over it. i'm sick of it if it's on a tattoo that's fine campers i know some of you have um have tattoos out there that might be written in cursive totally fine well we have a tattoo parlor on on um, campus. Yeah. Sam Sick. It's called Sandwich's Lair. <laughs> Why wouldn't he be our tattoo artist? He, he has the most tattoos to date. Um, uh, where, what was I saying? Oh, like brand logos. Like, okay, that's okay. We can do a brand logo. I don't hate it on a menu. I don't like it on a menu at all, ever. Just when it's written out long, I'm like, what the fuck does it say? Wedding invitations. They're pushing it. I know you're trying to be fancy and it's not a lot. That is so interesting that you say that because my friend Desiree, she's getting married this year and she asked me my my opinion on her wedding website. She's using Zola. Okay. And she sent me two options and I and it's a destination wedding and one had a lot of cursive and one didn't. And I literally told her, I said, I like the way the cursive looks, but I think with this being a very important wedding website because there's so much information 
with it being a destination wedding that people are gonna have to constantly reference back to it with the schedule of the trip and stuff. Yeah. I said, you need to be concise. It needs to be printed. And she agreed. When it comes down to the brass tacks, Truly. I don't need to be confused. Am I going to River Cove for the wedding or River Grove for the wedding? Those Each of them are eight hours apart. I could be going to the wrong place. We went to a coffee shop yesterday and from a distance, you read the name wrong. I, was, exactly. You did. Because it was in cursive. Let's stop using cursive altogether. I know no. wedding invitations maybe the name like mr and mrs blah, blah blah but when it's the details put it in a different font you can keep it classy you can keep it pretty but just the cursive it just needs to stop being digitized i can't see what the fuck's going on also you think i can read the declaration of independence well, no what if the menu says chicken cacciatore in a lovely script but the the description of the chicken chicken cacciatore is in a is in a solid font would that is that okay can you meet me in the middle here i'll meet you in the middle with that but i do fear that on some menus it's got to be a little bit of a bolder text and then i feel like you're missing the fanciness of it because cursive itself is supposed to be uh dainty it's like limp in the wrist it's eloquent i i see where you are i can't 100 percent agree with you because i do think that as a country as a nation as a world we are losing the beauty and grace of cursive every time i'm bored I write my name in cursive. I have amazing penmanship in cursive. I like it. I think it's flowery. I think it's romantic. And I will. I refuse to let it go by the wayside because at the end of the day, we are not handwriting as much as we should. We are digitizing our entire lives. So if you erase that, then you erase everything. And then you're erasing history. And are you going to sleep good at night thinking that you're erasing history yes. by shitting on Louis and Teresa? The digitizing I hate. And maybe we all just need to take some time today during your lunch break, campers, and write on a fucking napkin with a pen or a pencil or a quill and just write something in cursive. And that's the way that we can keep it alive. Just keep it keep it out of the chicken cacciatore. I'm sorry. I think we'll put it on the YouTube and we'll put it on the Instagram if we can find the still of it. Because I think the reference in which we're referring to and the long form cursive that Louis gave to Teresa was jarring at the eye. And even when he was reading it, he had to use his finger to point to every word because and that it was, was a lot freaky. to look at. That was freaky. He's holding a scroll. Imagine a grown man on the back of a boat with a trumpet player holding the other side. This sounds so crazy if you guys don't know what I'm talking about because I don't even know what I'm talking about. A trumpet player is holding one side of a giant scroll. Louis holding the other side. Teresa's sitting down and he's reading it word for word and pointing to each of the words, each of the cursive words, like a third grader. She loves him. And and I wish her the best. I do. But that's my take a hike. I agree. So what's your take a hike? <sighs> Short and simple this week, but also personal and hurtful. Okay. For our digital viewers. <laughs> okay. Or online watchers. You may notice my t-shirt I'm wearing today. It says, future loan survivor. Soul survivor. It says, future soul survivor. <laughs> And I didn't purchase this shirt. This was a gift from my sister. And me and my sister really bond over the show Survivor. She got me into it. This was a gift for my 29th birthday six weeks ago, almost two months ago. Oh, my God. And this was when things were looking up for me. I was still um, hopeful that a casting agent would see me and say, that's someone who deserves a spot on this island. And um, I'm getting choked up right now because I'm thinking about it. I have received no contact from Survivor. In fact, you received a no contact. I <laughs> said, please don't contact. <laughs> I, I don't understand what I did to piss off CBS. I just gave you your flowers in the last segment. And I want to be on an island. And I don't know. I'm watching the current season that was already filmed. It, these people aren't even athletic. Okay. So what is it about me? One girl is scared to jump off of a ledge. I can jump. I'm not a great swimmer, but I can still do things. Half these people aren't even athletic. And some of them are boring. Two of the girls look identical. I can't even tell them apart. <laughs> I'm not even joking, okay? The ones who look like Kim Lanuti. They're on different teams, and they both look like Kim Lanuti. And I just, <laughs> I don't, it's, I am, I am a star, and I want to be on the show. And everyone's like, well, do Big Brother. I don't want to do Big Brother. I don't want to be recorded that long. 
They don't stop recording them. It's twenty four hour footage. Yeah, but they have air conditioning in a bed. Well, I'll be the I'll be the I'll determine that once I'm there. If I ever want to do it. But Survivor? No, I, I don't want to do it, brother. I don't want to stay in some turf ass, green ass, orange and blue ass house. And if I get cast for that, delete this. Delete this quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but my goal is to get in Survivor, and I have to leave that goal on the boat with Louie and the scroll because it's out to sea and I'm never going to get it. And I have merch and I have dreams and I watch every single week and they do this annoying thing on the show where after something drama happens, Jeff says, did you just see that? That could be you. Apply survivorcasting.com. Jeff, look at me in the eyes when I say this, shut up because I, I did apply and you didn't even look twice at me. I know it's not you, so I'm taking that back right now. I'm looking at you, you snooty little casting intern producer who's 24 years old, who lives in Malibu and thinks she knows everything, thinks he knows everything, thinks they know everything. You don't because you had a good you had a good moment and you dropped the ball. And I'm here saying I'll never forgive you unless you change your mind. <laughs> so if they call you right now, you're in. Yeah, and we're deleting the segment. Okay, perfect. Uh, you know what? Maybe one day you will. Y everything is so kismet in life. Things happen when they're supposed to happen. But I understand your frustrations, and you just want to go tell them to take a hike. I understand. Yeah, go take a hike on the island and go look for a hidden immunity idol because I won't get one, clear clearly. So We should make our own hidden immunity idols and hide them around the house. Oh, my God. Maybe I'll start making you little hidden immunity idols, and when you find them, they'll have a, it'll have a little note on it that'll say, free kisses. <laughs> <laughs> that would make me feel so good. I would okay. love that. Can you do that? Yes. Uh, I think we also talked about they, they should make some sort of like a traveling show where you can, the survivors should go around the country. Pff, I'm such a marketing degree. Wait, I, this was my idea. I said on the couch. I said we together. Okay. Okay, I'm elaborating on it. Go ahead, elaborate. I'm saying a traveling show, so now I've added my element of the show. You never said that. All right, Barnum. You be Barnum, I'll be Bailey. One thing about us, I look at us as a team. Jonathan thinks we're competing, okay? And this is why we would never do well on Amazing you, Race. You just said, I'm a marketing genius. <laughs> with my idea. <laughs> like, what? Okay, tell them the idea. An tell idea them my idea. An idea until the person puts it in motion. Tell and them my, I'm, well, and it's I'm copywritten. I'm a people mover. I'm suing. <laughs> Sandwich so is suing. This is the idea, campers. Don't listen to the hater nation over here. So they're going to have a traveling circus in the summer, and it's going to be in big national cities, a la Chicago, Santa Fe. You're just describing a pop-up. Okay. <laughs> it's a pop-up. No, because pop-ups are breweries or T-shirt T-shirt stores. Yeah, this is beyond a pop-up. It's kind of like what they do for... Um, What's that big old mud race that everyone loves? Oh, the um, the John Taffer. That's what is that bar called? rescue. What are you talking about? Not the John Taffer. Don't be the crazy. The one, the one where everyone's wearing red and they're in the mud. The mud rudder. It's tough the, rudder. No, you're so close. Wait, Can you mud, muddy, muddy boys, muddy, muddy girls, uh, trail, sweat mud, uh, team building, all American all stars exercise. What is it? Winner. Okay, here we go. A, a tough, a, a tough mutter. That's not what I'm thinking. Tough mutter. No, it's yeah, tough mutter. I, I'm telling you, it's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of one that has a name like Gladiator. Jenny Evans. Jenny Evans. JennyEvans.com. Bob Evans' sister. Daughter. <laughs> Wait, no, it's a mud. Can, a I, tough can we pause the podcast for a second? What's up? Hold on, everybody. I need to figure this out. No, the, your, didn't your dad do one? No. You're thinking of an Iron Man. And, and Thank it's, you. No, babe, it's not an Iron Man. Iron Man, you're not in the mud. And Iron Man is just like an extended <laughs> like run. Oh. It's just like a lot of exercise. There's no mud. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. Either way, <laughs> okay. the jury's still up for debate. You haven't even, you haven't even explained what the idea <laughs> is. We've just been and circling you know what? the And drain. you know what? And you know what? And you know what? Maybe I won't. Maybe I don't feel supported in this room, and maybe that's not where a good brainstormer lives. <laughs> I want to surround myself with people who care and believe in me. It's my, it was my conjured idea. Okay, so then you tell the idea. Then so it's gonna it's gonna be a pop up experience. Boo! 
that you can do that is the survivor <laughs> challenges. So you don't have to stay on the island, but you get the experience of actually doing the challenges. It's going to be all to scale. You're going to have teams of people. You're going to have to meet there. It's going to be like a couple hours long. It's going to be very true to the show, but you don't have to like stay on an island. There's going to be so many fucking people who will be so into that. I mean, I'm not super fit, but I would love to participate to see if I can do it. I have really good ideas, but I feel like I can't add them because you're going to still say it's your idea. No, uh, that ship has sailed. You took it out okay. of context and you ran with so, it. So I have some ideas for payment tiers. Okay. So if you want to pay more money, you could pick your own team and you can go with your friends. But if you want the true experience and at the intro general admission ticket level, you get paired up with anybody random. And that's kind of how the show really is. But if you want that personal experience with your group of friends, then you have to pay more. It's kind of like escape room, but more like Survivor. That's how it is with my volleyball team. Really? Yeah. You have to pay more money if you want to make your own team? Yeah. Ugh, well, Volo Sports, we love you. <laughs> I was going to say, watch it, watch it. <laughs> Which one do you think is worse? Me not making Survivor? Or you, you not hate... making Survivor. Yeah, because I'm like, if you hate reading a menu, please. You're I not making you. Survivor. You know, we went to eat the other day, guys. It was so good. Seasons 52. I'm <gasps> obsessed. Oh my God, I had a Chilean sea bass. How did they cut it all the way here from Chile? I had a chicken and farro salad. Delicious. It was very good. The chicken Mia Farrow salad. I want Mia, Mia Farrow's, Farrow's hair in Rosemary's, Rosemary's baby. baby. That is not Mia Farrow's hair in Rosemary's Baby. That is one of my favorite Tyra Banks quotes ever from America's Next Top Model. Moving on. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week, campers. Jonathan's putting his gummy bear hearts up. He's obsessed. Put your hearts up, gummy bears. Wait, so we, <laughs> a long time ago, came up with the concept of like the Selena Gomez fandom being called gummy bears when we were on a road trip because we were delusional and like had been driving for so long. That's very funny though. It was hilarious. But then a couple weeks later was when everything started going down with the Selena fans and um, Mrs. Haley. Bieber. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, the joke has to be shelved because I can't talk about gummy bears. Me as a personal person, I'm not a gummy bear i wouldn't say but i just think it's fun i'm not a gummy bear at all i'm not a huge fan of selena i'll be honest and say that but i do love the fandom being called gummy bears i think it's hysterical yeah so put your hearts up anyways this is the part of the show where you put your hearts up for your personal gummy bear and who's getting the gummy bear award of the week as the camp crush of the week jonathan can you please start us off my camper crush of the week has it's been my camper crush for the past two weeks you're obsessed overnight oats do I have any O heads out there? Put, put your hearts up, Odies. <laughs> okay, so overnight oats. I don't know what took me so fucking long to get onto the trend of it. I didn't know what the fuck they were. I heard someone say, I was like, what is that? Like, what is the Jamestown settlement overnight oats? What the fuck is that? To Jamestown settlement. Yeah, it is giving um, colonial. Yeah, so obviously oatmeal. Have you heard of it? Well, if you get normal... Um, rolled oats i think they're called because you, you can get the steel cut ones which are processed and ready for microwaving but i think you have to get like the uncooked rolled oats is what they're called is so the rolled oat is what is is in, what i is for what i need yeah for my something about the steel i don't know what it is i think they're thinner anyway so i do equal parts oats I, i'll do like a quarter cup scoop of oatmeal of oats rather and i put it in a little jar and then i do a quarter cup of a milk of my choice. Right now it is almond milk. And then, you know, you do a little scoop of Greek yogurt. I don't love it. A lot of, like the recipes call for it and it does give it a better texture, but I don't like yogurt at all. It just freaks me out. It tastes like weird curdled dairy and it, it's got like living cultures in it. You could sub it out for milk of magnesia. Now walk me through the thought process there because that's a diuretic. Well, yogurt's a probiotic, which is essentially for your gut health. Activia. Maybe that's what you need. Excuse me. You're excused. Did you too? Did something come out? <laughs> not if you had activity. I'm sick of being attacked on this show. Babe, I'm not get stronger armor, please. <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, yeah. So Yeah, walk us through your free little flavors. What I have written down here in my notes says yogurt is gross to me. I, it has cultures. I don't know what cultures are. I'm as pale as they come. I don't have culture. So anyway, let me talk. Let me walk you through the toppings of my choice. As things started out, um, I started with Nesquik. 
I did. You put Nesquik in your overnight oats? The first time, yeah. And then I realized it was a mistake. I don't know. I just like, we have a lot of Nesquik and I don't know why I'm hanging on to it. I don't think it expires and I feel bad throwing it out. So I'm like, how can I get rid of this? It's got to go through me. Yeah. Um. So I did that. I don't really like it. What I have been loving is raspberries and a natural peanut butter to do like a little PB&J moment. That's been really good. Blueberries, which is like fine. I did one with blueberries. I liked it. I just did the oats, the yogurt, and and the blueberries. That's I did fine. the blueberry one with maple syrup and it was good. And that's the other thing is I add honey to all these because I can't have maple syrup. I have a weird, I don't know if it's an allergy or is just like a sensitivity where I feel like I'm going to throw up and my, my throat glands swell and I salivate a lot. I think it is an allergy because it only happens when you have maple syrup. And a couple times you'd be like, fuck it, I'll have it. And then you do get sick every single time. And it's not the fake maple syrup. What if you get the fake maple syrup and put it in there? I could do that, but I think... I like honey in it because honey makes it sweet and it's like the natural honey. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's not like adding sugar. Okay. I see your thought process. Does honey have sugar in it? Well, if it does, it's like a it's like a natural like like when people are so anti fruit at night, they're like, "Oh, there's too many sugars in it." I'm like, it's a natural sugar. You cannot be that restrictive with your diet where you're like watching at what time of day you eat fruit. God, you could be picking up a Snickers right now. You won with the blueberry. Like, love yourself a little, please. <laughs> Jeez. you're not yourself when you're hungry another <laughs> thing that i've tried out i have two more recipes here mini chocolate chips and bananas now that sounds good it, it as it turns out it wasn't i don't like bananas in overnight oats it's a little too mushy i need a heartier berry or like some sort of texture a thing bite. and that's why my favorite recipe is strawberries and half a graham cracker. And it tastes like a fucking strawberry cheesecake. I swear to God, I had you taste it last night. You don't like graham crackers. Did it not taste like a dessert? Well, he lied to me last night. Go on. So last night. <laughs> we really getting the knives out here, huh? No, we're going to talk about it because you did lie to me. And you have to admit that you lied to me. And then you could admit that you liked it. I didn't. I told you I didn't like it. And then you asked for a graham cracker. Continue. <laughs> No, this no, is just context, I'm sick of being painted. Context is everything, and we're not giving the campers context. Two more people just left. They left the room. <laughs> there was only three people here to begin with. They came back and left again. <laughs> so Jonathan has been pushing this agenda on me of trying a strawberry cheesecake. I don't fuck with cheesecake like that. Okay, I've been very, I've been very honest about that. I don't fuck with graham cracker. I've said on the show, someone would know this. I don't like pie, and I don't like a graham cracker crust. I do not like graham cracker. Also, you're buying the grocer the graham cracker. At least buy a cinnamon graham cracker. You're buying the honey graham cracker. Well, that's because I'm trying to watch my um, my sugar intake. What was the second ingredient in the graham cracker last night? Love. No, it was like something iron. Oh, reduced iron. Reduced iron. I'm like, well, they put a little bit of metal in the cracker. Just reduced iron. What does that even look like? So all this to say is, he comes in the room at 10 p.m. with his overnight oats, and he's. I can see the strawberries, and he's like, it's so good. I was like, what'd you put? And he goes, strawberries. And I'm like, is there? I said, is there graham cracker in it? He said, no, just try it. It's so good. I take a bite of it. Big old bite of graham cracker because this bitch thought that if I tried it after saying no to it, I would eventually like it. And he thought I was standing in my own way. I said, I do not like this. I do not like graham cracker. You just told me there was no graham cracker in it. And he snickers on the couch. This is so crazy. And I let you finish because that is not what happened. I did lie. And I can admit to that. Can you admit to yourself that you liked it because you told me, no, you know what? Actually, that is pretty good. That is pretty good is what you said, quote unquote. And then you said, yes, it was. And then you said, can I have a graham cracker? Sandwich, pull the footage. I'm pull sick footage. of this. You know what? I can admit to my wrongs. Can you say the same? You just remember things incorrectly, and that's okay. We're Hey, we're going to put our hearts up for this one because we're keeping it light and fluffy. <laughs> like my overnight oats. <laughs> no, um, but but in all, you are obsessed with the overnight oats. All in all night. seriousness, yeah, I just, I love it. It's been really good. You've been enjoying the times that you've had it with I the do, blueberries and the syrup. I don't mind it with the yogurt either. I think it's, it also just like, I don't know. I've been, I've actually, contrary to what some of you might believe about me, guys, I've been eating quite well this week. You have. Yeah. And I've been just like trying to exercise a little bit more. Um, it's making me feel like mentally stronger. But what I've noticed is, is it really is, when you don't eat as much processed food, 
you just do feel better. Oh, so so it just sits better in your body. And I'm never not going to eat processed food. I always gonna eat fast food. I'm always going to eat chips and shit. Like I love that stuff. I'm trying to like limit it to not every fucking meal having something in it. So for that, for a, a, like a dessert or like a breakfast, like it, everything, every ingredient at its baseline, other than your reduced iron crackers is pretty, I don't know, standard. Yeah. Oh, also. It sits well. My, la my last thought is that a lot of the recipes will be like put everything in and let it sit overnight, which is what you're supposed to do. And I guess people do it. But I like to just put the base of it, like the oats, the milk product and the yogurt if you choose to do so. And maybe even the honey, but I don't do that because you don't like honey. So I keep it separate and I don't eat the syrup. So I just leave it as it is. You're supposed to put them in with everything else, like the graham crackers you're supposed to add, but then it gets all fucking mushy. And I like that texture. I like to keep the berries fresh. So I keep them separate. And in the morning, I dump it out into a bowl, mix it all up. And I add the berries and then it's so fresh and fucking good. I think that's the real missing ingredient here, campers, because you might think you wouldn't like it. But the way that Jonathan makes it is like so smart because those toppings stay fresh and mm -hmm. they don't get gross. Have you, have you ever seen people make those salads for um, like meal prep and they put the dressing at the bottom with like the vegetables and they put the lettuce on top so that when they eat it at the end of the week, they flip it and all the dressing falls on top of everything. But it doesn't make the salad weep. No, that's smart though. Yeah, like it doesn't make the salad weep. Isn't that nice? I like that. It doesn't. Don't tell the salad bad news because it'll weep. No, it's like weepy lettuce. <laughs> weepy lettuce, sad lettuce. No, I think that's genius. It's smart. You know, I you got to keep it fresh. Got to keep it tight. Got to keep it crunchy. So, what are you crushing on? My crush of the week is actually quite controversial. It's something that I've been, I've hated on the show on so much. I'm sad. But I've had to switch my tune after hearing a lot of public feedback in the past few weeks from people close to me. Okay. You're not going to believe this, Campers. My crush of the week is Easter. <gasps> no, somebody go back to last year. Somebody go back to last year's episode. So when did everybody stop celebrating Easter? Mm. We stopped celebrating Easter, but apparently everybody else did too. And now I'm panicking because we're as a as a nation, we're losing a holiday. We need I you can hate a holiday. We can't end the holiday. Uh, the, so my manager called me this week and she's like, Oh, can you go to Las can you go to Las Vegas Thursday to Saturday for this Vanderpump rules thing? And I was like, I can't, it's too last minute, and my dad's birthday is I'm going home on Saturday to celebrate my dad's birthday. Like Love it, but those trips, they're just so fast paced. And then it's like everybody got what they wanted. And it's like, yeah, I got a free hotel room, but it's like, I'd rather just spend time with my family, and my friends. Like, I just, that's more important to me. So I was like, I can't go. And I was like, also, it's so weird that they would book that on Easter weekend. And my manager's like, oh, I'm not, who's, do you celebrate Easter like that? And I'm like, well, not, I don't like it, but I, I, I respect it. It's a holiday. Same thing has happened four more times since I brought up Easter. So many people are not seeing their family, not doing anything. They're just like hanging out or just not doing anything. And it's, I'm not a religious person, but I, I love eggs and whimsy. Of course I do. <laughs> and like, I'm going to complain about the family party, but I still am going to go. And it's, it's what we, it's, it's tradition. So now I feel like I have to sit here and, and, and champion a holiday I fucking hate because the rest of you apparently hate it too. And I refuse to let it wash down the drain. Okay. Wow, we've come a long way. I didn't see that coming. I know. I know. I didn't see it coming either, but I've been I've actually been shocked how many people are not celebrating. So what do you like about it? You like the eggs, you like the whimsy. I really don't like much about it. I don't like us deleting the, a holiday. Okay. Oh, okay. It really comes down to that. That affects you more. It's I have to stand up for the holiday because nobody else is. I am J Lo and this is me now. Like no one would do it. So I had to do it myself. You had to stand up. He has risen. He, he is risen. He is risen and the he is me. Yes. Hello, everybody. I'm here. I don't like Easter. I'm going to, you can have that one. We talked about it last year. If you weren't here for the episode last year, I look awful in pastels. Um, I don't eat ham. And even when I did, I think I've had ham like twice in my life. The food at Easter is chronically nauseating. The, uh, the springtime allergies are really bad. My mom is making you a custom salmon. Okay, no, but that is fine. But I'm talking about the standard, like, ham. What else goes on a plate? Like, those weird bready puddings. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not a fan, but I'm going to enjoy every minute with your family, so. Yeah, I'm excited just to hang out with my family. I, I didn't, we didn't spend the last three holidays with them. Like, what did we do holidays. Easter last year? We were with your family. 
Yeah. And then we did we did Thanksgiving with your family, and then we did Christmas with your family. Yeah. So I haven't spent like a, like a, a major holiday with my family in a hot minute, and I just this one's a smaller one, and there's. We have, I have five nieces and nephews and two of them are now under three right now. And it's like really exciting for them to do the Easter egg hunts. And these are like core memories that I'm excited to celebrate with my family. You know what I mean? I'm less, I don't care about the holiday, more about the family right now. I'm in my family era. I know. I can't believe it. Wow. Can we hide a real egg yolk inside one of those plastic eggs for the kids? I'll hide. That's sickening. We should. I'll hide eggs if the ground is not muddy. If it's a wet day the older kids can hide eggs for the younger kids. They're all like 13, 15 now. Like they can do it. If it's dry, I will take one for the team and do it. But it depends on the weather. It's it's weather permitting, truly for me. I was so bad at, at egg hunting. My dad would, when I wasn't watching, like if you watch the old home videos, my dad was just like <laughs> putting eggs in my basket because I would just stand there and I'm like so overwhelmed by everyone running around. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, you're not really competitive by nature, but that's not a bad thing. No, but wait till you see me on the volleyball field. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. Strum that guitar and sing for me at the camp. Strum that G-string. Yeah, would that make a noise if you pulled it tight enough? I'll yell. <laughs> <laughs> that was clever that was funny that was really funny okay that i'm obsessed with that that was i'm really thinking about that now jonathan will you walk me through your little song of the week yes of course uh i was listening to old songs that i have I've actually have a playlist it's called embarrassing shit you had on your ipod and it's because I recently found my iPod mini and it works when I plugged it in. But like, I don't have a headphone jack or any of that shit. So I just went through the songs. I was like, oh my God, I forgot about this song. Forgot about this song. Forgot about this song. And just added them on a Spotify playlist for myself. It's private. I'm not sharing it because it's embarrassing. Yes, hands up. I have an iPhone. I have a, a headphone jack. I have jack. iPhone too. <laughs> I have a headphone jack because I just got one on the Delta flight. Well, traditional. You could use it. I What, what I'm saying recently, like at my parents' house, and then I, like, got rid of the iPod. So it no longer, it ceased to exist. Oh, okay. I was confused. Yeah. Sorry. So I, I created this playlist so I can listen to it on the go, on the fly, via Bluetooth, which is great. And this song came on that I had totally forgot about. It's not that old, but I gave it a good listen to about six or seven, possibly 20 times. And that song is Love Drunk by Boys Like Girls. So amazing. I used to be love drunk, but now I'm hungover. I love you forever. Forever is over. We used to... uh, it's a good song. You can continue. I thought we were going to do it together. We used to kiss all night. Now it's just a bar fight. So don't call me crazy. Say a little goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like now it's a bar fight. That's a really funny way to describe a relationship. It sounds actually domestic violence, never mind. Yeah. No, it was, it's I'm not take that back. It's not. So the song premiered on MySpace and was later released on iTunes June 30th, 2009. And the single went to mainstream radio July 7th, 2009. Many critics, so like people loved it. The fans loved it. The of girlies loved it. Major. I did. But it faced a lot of criticism, and I didn't realize this or put two and two together, and I don't know how, but the uh, they were criticized for the song's unmistakable similarity to the killers Somebody Told Me. I somebody don't... told me that you had a boyfriend who looked like a girlfriend. Yeah, it is. Very, it's pretty well, sim- similar. to be honest... All the pop punk songs back then dead. Yeah, and is it that is it that like complex of an, an arrangement of a song? No, truly, truly, yeah. I feel like I like both of them. I really like both songs. I've never made that connection, but now that you say it, yeah, yeah, totally. I hadn't either. So the music video again, no fucking idea how this one went past me. I just found this out the other day. <laughs> the music video for the song <laughs> Ashley Tisdale is the female lead no way yes I couldn't believe it no way also fun little fact the lead guitarist and the drummer had never met before joining the band they join the band together get to know each other start going on tour end up finding out they're cousins I thought you were gonna say they kissed well <laughs> maybe they did and then they found out they were cousins and that became really contentious cousins can kiss no not in this state um so i (laughs) i love that song i loved boys like girls that first self-titled album it just takes i remember listening to 
the great escape in um detention and that was one of the first times i listened to the song holiday on that album do you remember that today is a winding road what's the song that was like boys like down like mine oh that's that's good charlotte oh (laughs) (laughs) well it's their name so it is i was not i'm like i was not a pop punk girly at that time and it's probably my biggest night for rap it really is. Like, it was obviously really into Paramore. I was really into, like, the major hits that anyone would know if they watched MTV. Fueled by ramen. But it's so funny because you and all of my friends growing up were so obsessed. Like, all the whole, like, like base of my friend group was at Warped Tour every single year. And I oh, was my like, God. I went to Warped Tour. I loved that. So it's, it's, it's funny. That, was, that song came out this summer before... Um, my freshman year and music was really fun right then mm-hmm. pop punk was really fun there'd be i wish there'd be a renaissance it would never be like what it was but mgk came close to it and i just think he's just to me so unlikable so unlikable but that one album like that halsey song that i covered that's a good one. Oh, i love that i feel like I that, wasted all this time. yeah and Lil Huddy tried to revamp it, but I think he's just too young for like the generation that really cares. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, even if the next generation were to do it, we would be too old that we'd be like, okay, I, I can't vibe with this. Yeah, I don't you know need. Mean? I don't need all. It's that. like a 35 year old at an Olivia Rodrigo concert. Like, yeah, it's allowed, but should it happen? Honestly, I have my opinions on her, and I'm going to keep it to myself. I like Olivia Rodrigo. I did you see her new camera setup at the concert? Yes. Oh my god, we watched that together. So cool. I just wish somebody would have like given it something someone said like this would have been amazing if it was an actual pop star i was like that was shady so what she has at one of her live shows is she lays on the ground on like a glass glass table (laughs) we're not gonna get into the glass table of it all um and then there's a camera under it and they project it on the wall behind her and it's it looks sick yeah like a camera under a glass wall yeah, we're table. not explain that right at all. The floor. We'll put a video up, figure it out. I feel like it's not that hard to visualize. Anyway, what's your, your song? My song of the week is White Dress by Lana Del Rey. When I was a waitress wearing a white dress, look how I do this, look how I got this. At the part she goes, down the many music business conference. Do you have that sweatshirt? It's in the closet. Oh. Um, you made me that, but that. That sweatshirt with that on it, that fun logo. That was fun. Oh my God, you know what's on it? What? <laughs> what's on it? I made Zach this sweatshirt that says Men in Music Business Conference, and I'm pretty sure it has digitized cursive on it. It does. I'm embarrassed. Oh my God, look at you. Look at me Changing being a your con- contra- Both of us were contradictory dicks. It depends on the type of cursive, mm. and that's what it is. It's You cannot generalize the whole category. It depends case by case. But for those who haven't heard the song, it is a little blip in the song. Oh yes, it's it's an incredible song. It's basically like her a song, which I interpret it really as like her talking about her life before she became famous and reflecting on that and like what would have been if this wasn't her life. Um, it's just it's a really fun a fun song. The reason why I chose this week is because the other night we ran out of stuff to watch on TV and we did what any gay person does when they want to watch something. Um, just in the background, they put on music videos such a part of gay culture just to literally critique and talk about pop music videos of course so i forgot about this one and it was it came the song came out in march 19th 2021 which was really such high peak of covid truly like that first year mark mm-hmm. so in the music video everyone's wearing masks and it felt like a relic of an older time mm-hmm. like time was truly so different then it's 2024 now it's nice. not even that far, but it does feel like a lifetime ago having to like go into a Walmart and wait in line for capacity with a mask on. It's like the people who were freshmen in high school are now like in college. It's it's insane. So crazy. So it's funny because I like obviously have been following Lana my entire life. Like that's someone who I've been with for my like I feel like my entire adult life into my teenage years and to see even like her in that phase Mm -hmm. is just interesting like she's constantly put on an album always so this was kind of like her COVID album but I just thought it was like so funny to see people in a music video environment but have to wear masks and social distance it just really connected a a forgotten piece of my history already it really flicked your bean it's a good song though. it's a really fun song the arrangement is so chaotic and crazy but she's like whatever it's still fun i'm like she just does what she wants to do that was the first track on that album too yeah was it yeah because i remember listening to it i was like how is this gonna go um she was working out so the men music business conference isn't real yeah it's just a reflection on like it's like a, a play on like what it is to be in the music industry 
I love that video clip of um, what's her name, that drag queen that we love, and she's dancing on the table at a conference, and it's like Lana oh, down at Bailey, the <laughs> Bailey, Bailey J. Mills. J Mills, Bailey J Mills on the table down at the Men in Music Business Conference. Oh, we'll have to put that in the Instagram yes, slides. Yes. That's funny. So good. Yeah, there's not much more to it other than the fact that I just love it and the video just like triggered an emotion and like a thought. So maybe think back to COVID, guys, and be like, wait, that was crazy that we all experienced that. I think that's all we have for today's episode. This was a really fun one. I'm sorry that we fought so much, but I think we're coming out of here stronger. And um, uh, uh, maybe say something. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate you so much. Uh, if you haven't already, give us a five-star rating and a little review. It helps us out so much. Um, maybe yeah. tell a friend. Yeah, We'd maybe. Love to expand the camp. We actually are getting a permit to extend our, our perimeter. Yeah, maybe take the episode and hit that silly little share button yeah. and post it on your story. <gasps> That would be nice. Yeah. We'd appreciate that. No, Take we're having us. so much fun. We're loving this. Um, new stuff on the way, as always. Yeah. With that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.